since the last playthrough challenge I did went quite well and got quite a bit of support, I'm doing another one. And it's the exact same premise as the last one, which you should go check out if you haven't yet. But it fire red, and I chose fire red for reasons you will see later on. Like in the last challenge, the rules are I can pretty much catch anything, but learning new moves is not allowed. If I do learn a new move, I'm not allowed to use that move. That includes HMs, so I can teach HMs to my Pokemon, but I'm not allowed to use those HMs in battle. So if I get rid of Wrap on a Tentacruel for Surf, I can't use Surf, and I don't have Wrap anymore, so I can't use that either. So I'm down a tree moves on that Pokemon, so it's an extra detriment. That's a little bit more challenge for me. Why not? For my starter, I decided to go with Charmander. Like in the last run, I wanted my rival to have the strongest possible starter, and although I would say Venusaur is the best out of the tree, Blastoise actually deals with the Pokemon I intend to use a little bit better, at least I think it does. I think the Charmander, Scratcher, as the whole point is to scratch and I guess Growl, although I will probably only use Growl against Brock. As a matter of fact, I only intend to keep Scratcher for a short period of time, so yeah, probably not gonna use Growl. Or even scratch that much, probably not gonna even scratch that much. After giving Ogre's Darn Parcel, I go ahead and get myself a Spearow. I got it because it has Peck and I thought that might come in handy, so I catch it. I name it Peckenstein, or because it's not enough space, Peckenstein. Okay, well, that's not, that it has Peck. That's pretty much what we care about. Alright, I'm in Viridian Forest right now and. I am journeying through, but on the way, got myself a Weedle, and I will be getting myself a Pikachu later. I got this Weedle because it's gonna be necessary for Brock. We need- we, Brock is gonna be majorly difficult, there's nothing, nothing we can get that has moved that Brock doesn't resist. At, at least as far as I could see. So I decided we were gonna try and poison Brock's Pokemon. I don't know if he has full heals in this game, and I'm praying that he doesn't because otherwise we're gonna need a ton of overleveling to beat him. And I don't know about the Pikachu. After some grinding, I went ahead and tested the poison snake strategy, and it worked pretty well in the first trainer, so let's hope it works on Brock. Not gonna lie, this Brock fight was hard. I had to try it a few times because it was just that difficult. And not a few times, like 10 times. And I got levels off of him, to the point where everyone got to 14, 15 around there. But eventually, I was, able, I was able to beat him via poisoning and him missing two rock tombs on Beedrill. That was pretty much the only reason we won. Thank god he didn't have his full heals, otherwise we would have been screwed. Mambo was easy, but on the way I caught myself a Paris. N not sure if I'm gonna need this, but Stun's form might not be terrible, and Scratch isn't that weak. Now against Misty, she leads out with Staryu, and I lead out with our new Fiora because I tried it without evolving Spearow, but it just wasn't gonna work. So Fiora to it came with Pet, which is a big upgrade because Staryu was actually a problem for us previously. But then, Starmie came out, and I switched to Paris, paralyzed it, let Paris faint, and then had Fiora beat it. And having Starmie get fully paralyzed was very useful too. Against my rival, Flame Troller Gaming, who is you guys? Totally check out, subscribe to him. His channel's great, totally. Uh, he leaves a Pidgeotto, he sand attacks, I don't miss, and eventually he dies, although Scratchy takes a lot of damage. Against Squirtle, I originally tried to use my Paris Matsutake, but it withdrew, so I decided so I decided to switch to Beedrill, poison sting him a bunch, and eventually I got a crit and a poison, so he went down. Abra can't fight back, so he just dies. I get a Matsutake get the experience. And then I just had Fiora Peck Rattata in one hit. So, easy battle overall. Hi guys, I caught an Oddish. Okay, the Oddish, nothing really special. I still have it on the party. Somewhere in the party. Yep, there it is. It got a couple levels, but it's nothing special. Only Absorb is really I'm gonna replace very soon. But this is what I'm interested in. Dug Trio. Dig Fury Swipes, Mud Slap, and Sand Tomb. This is going to be excellent. And the ground gym is going to be very, very ground gym. Electric gym is going to be very, very easy. Although I will say the ground gym probably won't be too hard with Molly on the team. I am excited to destroy everything with this thing.
This should shock none of you, but we destroyed Lieutenant Surge with our Duck Trio. You know, I was having a feeling that this Duck Trio would be pretty overpowered. I didn't realize you could find level 16 Oddish north of Vermilion City until I was on my way to go to Cerulean. So I taught myself one, and this is the moves that it came with. This is gonna be excellent, trust me, guys. This is gonna be great. Rock Tunnel was fairly easy, but on my way, got myself a Judo. I named it Ben because it has magnitude, and with magnitude, I want to get magnitude 10, so I named it Ben after Ben 10. I'm clearly very funny. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna be a pretty good Pokemon. Rock for a magnitude are gonna be quite solid. I think this will be good. On the way to Silicon City, I stopped by to catch myself a Growlithe here. And it has Intimidate, very useful. What we care about the most is Bite and Ember. Bite, not bad coverage, not bad. Definitely gonna be helpful against some rocking ground types that if we have to fight them. And also gonna be useful in Pokemon Tower. And Ember here, Ember Fire Stab, gonna be useful in the upcoming Grass Gym and probably overall gonna be decent. Although I do intend to replace Growlithe eventually. Eventually, it's gonna take a while to replace him though. Giovanni was a joke. I had to paralyze this Kangaskhan to beat him, but overall, Graveler handled it very easily. I started the battle with Flame Troller in Pokemon Tower, but I actually have Beedrill in front, and he leads out with his uh, Pidgeotto, so that's terrible. Graveler was able to deal with it easily by not missing with Rock Throw, even though he got Sand Attack. He sent a War Turtle, and I sent in Gloom, but absorbed it nearly nothing. Then he switched to Execute, so I had to switch out the Arcanine to deal with it. Definitely took a while, Hypnosis and Leech Seed are very annoying, but eventually I landed two Embers. He got up a Reflect though. Wardrobe came back in and I slowly chipped it down with Gloom. Our speed time was annoying, but eventually Gloom pulled through. And for the last two Pokemon, I just destroyed them both with Duck Trio. Like, they were nothing. Despite Reflect. Because Reflect went down at that point. I know recently we've been catching a lot of Pokemon, but I want to catch another Pokemon. Got myself this Honda over here, named it Sage because it's gonna be doing a lot of utility things. Just like Sage from Valorant, Spike, Curse, Nightshade, and Confuse right here. Relaxed Nature is not ideal, but I'll I'll live with it. I'll live with a relaxed nature, although I yeah, I really don't like that relaxed nature. Look at that speed, that could have been much higher. Alright, I'm not gonna look it up. Someone in the comment section, look up what Dragonair's catch rate is. Goodness! It took so long to find one. And then I found like six, seven. They kept run running. That took like 20, 30 minutes to get one dragon here. And I was speeding up. That would have taken hours if I didn't speed up. My god. I didn't the visionary because I checked the Zoras.com for synonyms for impossible. And this was one of them. I thought it might sound cool. I don't know. Also, at least, at least we got a really good one. Like, this is the boost that Leer, Thunder Ray, Twister, and Dragon Rage. And it has a timid nature. So that's nice, that's nice. I definitely like this Dragonair. But my goodness, that took any absolute eternity. By the way, guys, I'm gonna go try and get a Kangaskhan right now. And if you're wondering what I want with it, I want Mega Punch. That's what I want. Uh, hang on, there was something else I wanted to show. No, I guess not. Okay. I'm finally taking on Erica, and as you guys can imagine, it was easy. Just swept it with Embus. Against Koga, I let off with Kangaskhan to fake out and then Mega Punch is coughing, but he actually survived the Mega Punch and then healed. So he got off more stuff than I wanted him to, so I had to switch to get rid of a smoke screen. But Graveler dealt with Muck really easily. Then I had Arcanine deal with the final coughing, or at least I tried to, but then I ended up dying to it, so I had to send in Dragonair to finish it off. Sent the Dragonair to deal with Weezing a little bit before going down and eventually letting Kangaskhan's Mega Punch finish it off. I'm about to take on Silco, but on the, before we do that, I gotta show you guys the Hitman Lee that I got myself. Tato, because it looks like a potato to me. And I just realized I don't know about that. Wait, what am I doing? So, got Sassy Nature. Why are the Nature so bad? What's everyone's Nature? Careful? That's bad. Naughty's good. Timid's amazing. Knife's good. Okay, maybe the Nature's on the pattern. Sorry. We have Limber as our ability. This is what... This is an incredible moveset. Rolling Kick, Jump Kick, Brick Break, and Focus Energy. This is insanely cool, good. This is such a good moveset, and I am very down to use Tato here. Alright, let's see how Tato actually does, though. Fighting types aren't great in Candle, so I don't know. 
got a great moveset though. Who knows? Maybe it'll be better than I think it is. Although I do have, I already think it's really good. <laughs> what am I saying right now? All right, guys, I'm sorry. In Sylvcore, our rival Flame Troller man here leads out with Pidgeot and Kangaskhan. Misses a Mega Punch, but other than that, we dealt with it pretty easily. Then against his Growlithe, I simply had Dunk Trio just go for Dig plus Sand Tomb to kill it. And against Blastoise, I originally wanted to send in my Vile Plume. Yes, I finally evolved it. But then I decided to send in Visionary. I thought it would be better because Thunder Wave plus Twister plus Dragon Rage would be a pretty good. And it almost worked out, but he did get fully paralyzed once or flinch from Twister. So I ended up going down to Bite. And my Vile Plume, even when the Blastoise was at 20% health, 25%, Absorb couldn't KO. That's pathetic. Then after that, we just dealt with it pretty easily. Kangaskhan dealt with Alakazam, and then Arcanine dealt with Execute, and I know that was in the wrong order, but that's fine, whatever. I know he said that Alakazam last, that's what I mean when I say wrong order. Alright, Sabrina, could have ever lied to Dragonair, Mr. Mime got crushed by Kangaskhan, Venomoth took down my Kangaskhan, but then died to my Duck Trio, and Duck Trio destroyed Alakazam. And she really can't take these physical attacks very well, can she? Oh wait, never mind, I was Arcanine that dealt with Venomoth. What am I doing? Not really much of an incredible catch, but I decided to get myself a Poliwhirl here. Gonna evolve it, and it has Bubble and Water Gun, and as well as Hypnosis. This is probably gonna be pretty useful for Blaine, and then we might get this all the way through. But the team is really strong right now, so I don't really want to replace anybody. I'll think about it. I'll think about using Winnie here. We need that with the first two Pokemon, and then for Rapidash, I switched out because I feared Bounce, but then I got one shot, so after that, it was a problem. I got Fire Blast a lot, and then Arcanine came out, and it wasn't as threatening. I was able to deal with it just fine. Now, while I was in the Berry Forest on the Sevi Islands, I caught myself a level 40 Hypno just because I thought it would be useful. Didn't realize it had Psychic already. When I looked up, it said Psychic was level 48. Either I saw wrongly, or the information was wrong. My goodness! I also- I did catch two Hypnos, but they're just hasty and naive. Then that's the only- really the only difference. I think this Hypno is way better though. Yeah, this Hypno is way better. It's, all, it's also high level. So we're gonna be using this Hypno for sure! Psychic, my goodness! Wow, I didn't realize it would have that. I didn't want to repeat any Pokemon from the original Heart Gold run, but Psychic, I can't pass up on that. My goodness, and also Poison Gas might come in handy. Might. <laughs> I obviously Oko Giovanni's first Rhyhorn with our new Seedra Rod. It's not actually new, I got I got it a long time ago. Duck Trio, I thought I, that it would outspeed me and Earthquake me, but then I probably wouldn't get two shot because Seedra has usable defense. But it's that I just straight up crit Oko him by outspeeding him with Seedra, so that's amazing. I sent in Hypno for Needle Queen, but Psychic uh, didn't kill, which I expected. But then Earthquake crit me and nearly killed me. I, he healed a bunch, and I psychic him a couple more times and brought her down. I said him and her, wow. Then for Needle King, I decided to try using Molly's Mud Slap because I didn't want to dig because I had Earthquake, and I didn't want to get caught underground while I used that. But it didn't miss once. King Kong's Critical Fake Out finished it off after that, and obviously, the last Rhyhorn just got killed by Seedra. Overall, pretty easy battle, only one feint, and it was from Duck Trio. I had no idea that the Electabuzzles would have a Thunder Punch. I went to the power plant because I realized I forgot to get a Magneton with Spark. I don't want to overlap team members, but Magneton with Spark is really good, and I real and I love Magneton. But I ended up catching an Electabuzz with Thunder Punch. I didn't realize they had Thunder Punch. That's really cool. Oh, I just really wait. Calm Nature is actually good because Thunder Punch is not a physical move. Wow. All right, this is gonna be a very nice team member to have. Also, this one's actually at the level where I caught it, 32. You can see it. Alright, well, I'm gonna go train this guy up. This is gonna be very helpful in the league, probably. I start the battle with my new Dewgong, and Icy Wind is Pidgeot, and it works well. Icy Wind into a Roar Beam, kills him, and Wing Attack did nothing. I stayed in against Rhyhorn. I had Dug True, but I stayed in. I wanted to see if Roar Beam for one shot, and thankfully it did. 
and I was intending on testing it out against Execute, but then I decided it was time for Embassad to just flame wheel it, and it worked well. Against his Blastoise, I sent in Joshua the Electabuzz, went for Thunder Punch, and all he had was Water Gun. Water Gun. Yeah, he went down. <laughs> Against Growlithe, I just sent the Ductrio to dig in Sand Tomb and a Kangaskhan for Alakazam to fake out and to Mega Punch, and he missed Disable. Alright, guys. Final team before the league. Victory Road was a piece of cake. I did catch a few Pokemon that are on the team. So, um, I did actually remove some very, very useful Pokemon. Ductrio, Kangaskhan, Vileplume. They're not on the team anymore. Because I just decided that some of these were better. I do feel kind of bad, but it's okay. I well, they were important, and we will respect them. We're bringing Jimmy here. Jimmy is gonna be very important for lands, and overall, I think Ice is very good against the league against Bruno's Onyx, Agatha's Golbat, and then a couple of Blues Pokemon, I believe. I think Jimmy's gonna be very useful. Phil here, a Machoke that I caught. I remembered it at Cross Chop, so I caught it, and yes, it does have Cross Chop. Revenge, Vital Throw, Submission, Cross Chop. We, it's gonna be good for Bruno's Onyx, although that one isn't really too threatening. Very useful against Lorelei, and let me see, Blue? We can do some stuff to Blue, and also overall it's a decent neutral move. It's gonna be a u pretty useless against Agatha and Lance, though. That's kinda sad. Next we have Joshua. I think Joshua's coverage is great with Thunder Punch. Blue, uh, very definitely gonna be great for Blue's Blastoise, Lorelei, neutral damage against most of Bruno's team. Uh, Agatha, Agatha can just Thunder Punch a couple things, and I think that's pretty good. I think Josh is gonna be good against Agatha. Definitely Lance, Gyarados gets crushed, Aerodactyl gets crushed, and Charizard gets crushed. Well, he has Charizard in this game, right? No, he doesn't have Charizard in this game. It's Dragonair, Dragonair, Dragonite, Aerodactyl, Gyarados. I mean, neutral Thunder Punch isn't gonna be terrible, but I'd probably rather use Dugong against his Dragonite. Liane is coming along. I think Liane is gonna be pretty good for Bruno. Generally, we don't really have a great team for Bruno, so I chose Liane to be the one dealing with most of the stuff he has. So, apart from Liane, oh wow, our attack's higher than our special attack. That kind of sucks. <laughs> so, just spam Psychic, maybe Poison Gas or Headbutt if we need to. Embassa here. Uh, what was Embassa for? A little bit of Lorelei, the Jinx. Neutral damage against much of the league. Intimidate's very you. Oh, we don't have Intimidate. Whatever. We're bringing Embassy anyway. Um, I think it's gonna be good for Blue's Executor. He has Exec- yeah, he has Executor. And finally, Wendy, the Marowak. Didn't really do anything with his Marowak. Other than that, I- Marowak is pretty much filler. I replaced Ductrio. I feel bad. But Bone Meringue is so much better than Frash. It's way better. They're both pretty equals in stats. But I prefer Marowak being much bulkier. The speed on Doug Trio is nice, but that physical defense is going to help us square up against Blue's Rhydon pretty nicely and Bruno's team better. It's going to help. I think this can beat the league decently easily. Let's see how we do. Alright guys, do you guys think we can beat the team? I mean beat the league with this team? Let me know guys. I'll see you guys against in Lorelei's room. Lorelei had a bit of a rough start. With Machoke, I tried to old code Dugong with Revenge, expecting a Surf or Ice Beam. But instead, instead of Hail. So Revenge did it in one shot, and the next turn, I got hit by a really strong Surf. Vital Throw KO'd, but Hail was up. Against Slowbro, I just had Electabuzz just Thunder Punch it a few times. We got an unnecessary paralysis, but overall, Slowbro just went down. Then against Cloyster, I just one shot that thing with Thunder Punch. Then Jinx came in, so I had Arcanine go in. And I tried flame wheeling it, it put me to sleep with Lovely Kid, so I just sped the game up and just tried to wake up. And eventually I did. For Lapras, I sent in Machoke to try and revenge Oko it, if possible. And we got really close. We barely survived the surf, but unfortunately just couldn't one hit KO. We were able to get one last little vital for up before we went down, meaning Joshua was able to finish it off and we beat Lorelei. For Bruno, I just had Wendy, Bone Merang, his first Onyx, and his second Onyx, unfortunately, it created an Earthquake, meaning that Wendy did go down, but we got one Bone Merang off. I had Dugong finish it off with an Aurora Beam, and against Hitmonchan, before, I wanted to keep Hypno healthy, 
So I sent in Emba Sun to deal with it. I went for Takedown, knowing his defense was terrible. And I went for Rock Tomb and Miss. I went for Flame Wheel next turn for some reason. I don't know. I don't remember why I just did it. And I went for Counter. Then I went for one more Takedown, and it went down. Then against Machamp, I sent in Hypno. Got Scary Face, Psychic oh, 2 Shot, even through the Citrus Berry. And he missed his cross up and went down. And then Hitman Lee, sure, landed two Mega Kicks, but they couldn't kill me, and he went down in two Psychics. That was easier than Lorelei. Agatha was not as easy as the first two. She let off with a Gengar, and I let off with Hypno, thinking that I wouldn't get hit through hard, even if she did have ghost moves. Then she went for Confused, where I hit, my, I hit myself, Shadow Punched it a lot, I hit myself again, and then I died. So immediately, my Psychic type against what's basically a Poison Specialist goes down. I send an Embassy and I just spam Flame Wheel to no end, and she keeps spamming Confused Ray. She went for Double Team, but stank Arceus, I don't miss or hit myself that much. I didn't get Toxic, but it it, go, it went down, and that's what's important. Golbat was completely destroyed by Joshua's Thunder Punch and Swift, and then for Arbok, I sent in Marowak. To just bone meringue it a couple times, even through intimidate, and it was and it went well, worked perfectly fine. Then against the Haunter, I sent in Joshua, Thunder Punch, he cursed, so he killed himself, and finally the final Gengar, I just threw my team at it. I went I sent in Dugong, spammed Icy Wind, went down to some sludge bombs because of the poison, sent in Arcanine to just die, and then finally Joshua Thunder Punch was able to finish it off. That was close. My last two Pokemon was Marowak and Machoke. They can't hit Gengar. Joshua was my final hope. Lance wasn't really that hard of a fight. Against his Gyarados, I just Thunder Punched it. Then Dragonair, I Icy Wind, the, I mean Aurora Beam, I Aurora Beam the Dragonair. Then for Aerodactyl, I sent in Electabuzz and took an Ancient Power and Thunder Punch. And I thought I would live another one, but he went for Hyper Beam, so I went down. So I finished out with Machoke because I wanted to use Machoke a little bit more. Then I sent in Dugong for Dragon Knight, I Icy Wind, and a Citrus Berry healed him out of Icy Wind range, or at least I think it was out of Icy Wind range, but not Aurora Beam range. So Aurora Beam KO because it's stronger than Icy Wind, and for the final Dragonair, I simply just spammed out my ice moves. Lance was an easy battle. I was pretty overconfident in this battle. Uh, his things were stronger than I expected. I expected Marowak to not get two shot by Earthquake. I expected my Dugong to do, to tank a bit better, and I expected Hypno to maybe last a bit longer. And I go, yeah, I I'm gonna go grind a little bit, and I'll come back and we'll. See. All right, I end up modifying the team quite a lot. We still have Joshua, we have Jimmy, we have Liane, we have Rod. I thought Rod would. Be because right now we see the struggle with and I also think the water stab is pretty useful. Also that speed and defense is pretty good. And a hasty nature, I see. We have Visionary, been a long time since we used Visionary, bringing Visionary back. I was just thinking maybe Thunder Wave, Twister, and Dragon Rage, we can chip things down pretty effectively. I think, I'm thinking. Also those stats are humongous. And finally Tato, I got Tato back. Or pal Tato. I don't know why I didn't bring Tato. I brought Machoke instead of Tato, and I f hate myself for that. I don't know why. Well, we'll bring Tato back. Hopefully, Tato can do better than Phil. This is kind of a weird battle. Against Pidgeot, I went for Icy Wind into Aurora Beam, and this time we're actually strong enough to do a KO with that combination against Pidgeot. And then he sent in his Rhydon, so I decided to send in Cedra. Who actually O-Code right on? Man, Cedra never seems to do a baby. For Exeggutor, I sent in Visionary to try and small it, but we kinda got close but didn't really make it. Dugong was able to finish it off with an Aurora Beam after that. Then Alakazam came out, so to deal with Alakazam, I had Hypno just headbutt in a punch. For Arcanine, I had Cedra go for two water guns, then went down, but I was able to finish it off with Hitman Lee after that. Finally, Blastoise, and this is where I got stupid. Thunder Punch wasn't enough, and I got crushed by some Hydro Pumps. Hitman Lee was outsped and couldn't do enough damage with Brick Break, so he went down. Then I sent in Dugong, and we just stalled. Stalled and stalled for an eternity. It felt like that muck from the Hard Gold Challenge. 
eventually, and I mean eventually, we won. Because he did no damage to me. I had rest to keep healing. And he, he ran out of floor restores. We beat Flame Troller Gaming, who was for some reason the champion of the Kanto region. Guys, this was definitely a very fun run. I like Fire Red and Leaf Bean a lot. I think they're a great game. The Generation 1 modified sprites compared to the Gen 3 are great. I think the graphics are pretty good. Wait, this is a review of Fire Red. Okay, the challenge though. The challenge, it wasn't, honestly, it wasn't too difficult. The early game was quite brutal to be perfectly honest. Like, it was really difficult at times. Really difficult. There were a lot of fights off camera where I was just struggling and being slow and that's why this challenge took so long. So many things took a long time to do but towards the end we got some amazing Pokemon and that helped us win. Ah, Look at that. We beat Flame Troller. I don't know how he got to be the champion but it, he, he did but now he's not. And now we are the champion with this team. Now this team isn't exactly perfectly accurate, not everyone here really did a lot. And also, there's a lot of Pokemon in the PC that we used all for a long time that were really, really good. Ben the Graveler, Doug Trio. I can't remember the Doug Trio's name. I, I, I hate myself, oh it was Molly, right Molly, I don't remember the name all the time. Ah, our Kangaskhan, they were all amazing Pokemon. They helped us so much throughout our journey. And look at us now. They helped us get to this point. Well guys, I guess that's where we're going to wrap up this video. Let me know if you want to see me do more challenges and whether I should script them next time. So guys, leave a like as usual. Subscribe. Let me know what you want to see from me in the future. This video took a long time to make. Definitely longer than the hard code video as you can tell. So guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like. Subscribe. Let me know what you want to see me do in the future. Have a great day. Peace.